The next time you're stuck in a traffic jam, you can distract yourself by thinking about how your predicament is similar to a certain type of electrical circuit. You see, when too many people try to use the same route, because it's the only one available, there's a lot more resistance to easy passage. Someone slows down, and everyone slows down. A little fender bender, another car overheats, and it all adds up to a commuting nightmare. Well, it's much the same story for certain types of electrical circuits. When there's only one path for electrical energy to follow, we call these series circuits because all the components are lined up one after another in series. When there's only one path for the energy to follow from source to load and back, it imparts particular characteristics to that circuit. In a series circuit, each device shares the energy of the source. That is, if the source has, say, 12 volts of potential energy, that 12 volts is divvied up between all the devices in the circuit. Technically, we say the voltage drops across all the devices add up to the voltage of the source. In our 12 volt example, we see 12 volts across the source and measure 12 volts across both loads. What would the measurement be across each individual load? If you picked A, you're almost right. Closer than the other choices, anyway. The two devices do split the voltage, and if they were identical, the same amount of resistance, they'd split it in half, 6 volts each. If their resistance varied, they'd divide it in direct proportion to their resistance. Rule number two. No matter where you measure it, current flow is the same in a series circuit. If 2 amps leave the current source, then 2 amps are flowing everywhere in the circuit, anywhere you measure. The series circuit is much like a single path water circuit in this regard. If 5 gallons per minute leave the pump, there's 5 gallons per minute flowing everywhere in the system, unless there's a leak. The same holds true for series electrical circuits. Number 3. Each resistive component of the circuit adds its own resistance, so the total resistance of the circuit is the sum of all the individual resistances, and every added resistor increases the total resistance. One quick additional note about this circuit. I have not said anything about the wire that connects all these devices together, because it doesn't have much resistance especially compared to the resistance of the devices. It can safely be ignored in a discussion of a simple circuit like this one. But what about the wire in a circuit like this one, which might run for hundreds of miles? Do you think the resistance of the wire can be ignored? No, it can't. Up to 10% of the energy sent out by a utility is lost in the resistance of the wires. And there are other effects also, which will, will be covered in later videos. Oh, and one last series circuit rule. If there's a break in the circuit, everything is de-energized. One path, right? Okay, so that's the story of series circuits. Voltage drops across the loads add up to the source voltage. Current flow is the same everywhere. The resistances add up and a break stops the action. Good. Getting back to that commuting nightmare we were involved with earlier, would things improve if more lanes were available? Well, of course. The resistance to passage would decrease. It would be easier to get through. Well, we can add lanes to our electrical circuit, too. Such a circuit is called parallel, because now the components run in separate paths next to each other instead of in a line. Let's see how that affects things. First off, what do you think the voltage drop across each device will be? Shared? The same? Something totally weird? Turns out, it is the same, 
the voltage drop across each leg of a parallel circuit is the same as the voltage of the source, which means that each leg has the same potential energy available to it as if there was only one device in the circuit, rather than having to continually split it up with all the other dev devices like happened in the series circuit. Current flow is also a bit different. Instead of being the same everywhere, it varies through each leg depending on the resistance of that leg, Ohm's law at work. So measuring current here shows only what flows in that leg, but measuring here shows the total for all the legs. The big winner is resistance. Do you think devices in parallel increase or decrease the resistance of the circuit? Remember the traffic jam. Every time you add a parallel leg to a circuit, the total resistance goes down because there's another path for the current to follow. Even though that path may have some resistance, it still provides another route, so the total resistance drops. In a parallel circuit, the total resistance of the circuit is less than the resistance of the smallest leg. If you're interested, the resistance can easily be calculated using a formula involving reciprocals, but that's beyond the scope of this conceptual explanation. However, easy to find on the internet. What about breaks in the circuit? Well, if a break happens here, we're out of luck. Everything goes dead. But if a break occurs in one of the legs, yes, only that leg is de-energized. The rest of the circuit goes on. So, there you have parallel circuits. Voltage drop across each leg equals the source voltage. Total current is the sum of the currents in each leg. Each additional parallel leg lowers the total resistance, but if a break occurs in one of the legs, only that leg is de-energized. So, why do we care? Well, imagine if the electrical circuit that supplied our houses was a series circuit. You turn off a light at your house and everyone goes black. You may have experience with holiday light strings that work that way. Not a good way to wire an electrical system. The electrical circuits in your house are wired in parallel. That way, the same voltage is available to everything. Current flows depending on the demands of each device. Resistances are not cumulative, and a failure in one circuit doesn't shut down everything. The bulk power system is arranged as much as possible in a way that mimics a parallel circuit, so that a break in a line doesn't put everyone in the dark. There are still series components to the system because of economic and land use constraints, and we'll cover those later. But for the most part, the system that supplies electricity to your house behaves as a parallel circuit. Since every additional parallel leg reduces the total resistance of a circuit, you might expect the resistance of the total electric system to be... That's right, very small. And as resistance drops, current increases. Remember our buddy Herr Ohm. Because of the low resistance, ground faults in a parallel system are very dangerous. The full value of voltage is available to drive current flow, and resistance is very low. Watch for my video on staying safe when exposed to fault current. Well, that's an introduction to series and parallel circuits. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to see other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.